So the first thing that I'm going to show you, um, when you're thinking about a piece of paper, I think it's a really good idea to think about the idea of the object, the printed object. I think it's a really good idea to think about the idea of the printed object. So one of the things that I'm thinking about when I'm making a monoprint is how my image is going to appear on the paper. So as a rough guide, if I'm, if I'm using a sheet of paper A3 size, I'm going to have an image on it which is going to be smaller than that A3 size and it's going to have a reasonable border around it. So as a rough sort of guide, I would normally think if I fold that paper into a quarter, that's approximately the size of image that I would have on a sheet of paper like that. I mean, the proportions can vary. But I think if it's that sort of size, it looks to me like the paper's not big enough. What I do is I'm going to make a stencil, and that's going to give me a nice clean monotone. So I know that I want an image about this sort of size, so I need to know how big the borders are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a spare piece of paper as a paper roller. I'm going to mark that distance. I'm going to move this over here and I'm going to mark this distance and obviously that border is bigger than that one. Now if I put a mark between those two marks that's the halfway point between those so now if I draw this and then bring that over to the other side That border is the same as that border. And I'm just going to get a ruler, because I've got a ruler that's one of just passed me down a ruler. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I'm just going to draw that, that first of all. Now, if you mount anything, if you mount a piece of work so that the bottom is exactly the same size as the top, it visually looks too low. So a piece of paper has a physical centre, but it also has an optical centre. And the optical centre is not quite the same as the physical centre. So that normally means that the bottom of the image is slightly bigger than the top. It doesn't need to be massively so, but you're doing it sort of by way. So if I want that to be my bottom border, again I use my spare piece of paper as a paper ruler. I'll mark that distance. Drawing out. And then the top of my image, again, paper ruler. This is much easier reading a paper ruler than actually measuring it because it's so easy to mismeasure something when you're doing it with a you know, traditional ruler like this. So basically, before we start making the print, we've already made decisions about the orientation of the image that we want how big we want the image to be. And I've drawn out this, and I'm now going to cut this. So you need to have a sharp scalpel. You need your ruler on this side. My fingers are well away from the edge of the ruler. And I'm going to cut on the waist side of the paper. So if I slip, I cut a bit of paper I don't want. So I'm always cutting on this side. Um, a sharp scalpel is much safer to use than a blunt one because if you use a blunt scalpel you use too much pressure and you're more likely to slip. And if you don't have a sharp knife, the paper has a tendency to snag and tear. Now when you're in this stage of doing one of the maps, you could if you wanted to make a series of different kinds of stencil shapes. So you might have you know long thin shapes, you have different proportions. Okay, um, normally I would have um, I think about my working space. I'm right-handed, so I'd like to have some of my tools on my right hand side. I'd like to have the ink on my right hand side, my paper on the right hand side. If I've got it on my left hand side there's a tendency for me to reach across my work. That's where you can dribble and split the stuff over what you're doing. So what I'm going to do is, because of the way I've set this up, I shall move the 
pass across a little bit just to make that easier for myself. I'll just make sure that my stuff is in frame still. Yes. Okay. Right, the quality of the image relies very much on the amount of ink that you put down. So you can, you can vary the quality considerably by just the inking process. I've got a rough idea about how big this area is. And sometimes if I've got a soft pencil, I might just draw a little mark on the glass to give me an idea where that is. By far the big mess problem that students have is they ink up far too large an area of glass. And then what happens is that your ink is on here and that's going to get onto your hands, get onto your elbows and just spread everywhere. So you only really need to have that area inked up. I want to take a palette knife and I'm going to spread that ink out. And then I'm going to roll it onto the glass. Now this is a cheap lino roller. When you see people rolling, often you see people just going backwards and forwards with a roller. Now what's happening is that relatively the ink is staying in exactly the same position on the roller. So if you lift up when you roll, so that the roller's got a chance to spin round and that starts to distribute the ink. Now basically if you roll fast, you take ink off the glass. You roll slowly, you deposit the ink. So what you want to do is ink up an area that's about the size of a rectangle. Now this roller has a little plastic ledge on it. The idea of the ledge is that the roller is left upright like this. It's not left in the glass like that. When it's left on the table like that, it starts to develop little straight edges, which means it doesn't roll out properly. Now the stencil is going to go over the top of that. And as I say, there's no ink on the edges, so I'm not going to get dirty. And what I've done is I've not, I've made a stencil, which is going to give me a clean print, but I've also constructed something called a registration print. So that means that if I was doing a print in colour, and I had maybe a three colour monotype, and I had a black one, a red one, and a blue one, if I've got three stencils all cut the same shape, then I can ink up on that one, move that to that one, and then the ink is going to go in the right position, if that makes sense. So this is a sort of basic registration technique. Now, very simply, paper goes on top. And you draw. So you can draw whatever you want to draw. When you're drawing, be careful you don't use too much of your hands on the paper, because obviously that's going to press through. And you flip that over. And that's a monotype. Now, if you look at the line quality at the moment, the line quality is quite a fine line. And pretty much the drawing has responded to the initial marks that have been made. That's because of the amount of ink that's been put down. Um, it's quite a flattering um, approach to making an image. So, whilst that drawing is not the best drawing in the world, when it becomes a monotype, it sort of makes it become a bit more kind of concrete and certainly a bit more graphic. Now that's wet and that's going to take a bit of time to dry. So you need to think as well about where you're going to store your wet prints. So a, a thing that I'll often do with students is to get newsprint under the table and we'll store under the table. What you don't really want people doing is putting fingers all over this and putting tape up on the wall. Put that to the side. So move that over this way. I'm going to put a bit more ink down. Now this particular ink, what I would say, is this is quite fast drying. So it, it, can you see, when it's quite thin, it's already going quite stodgy and quite skin based. So it's not the best ink in the world to use, 
I mean, you get much, much better results, obviously, if you use better quality ink. But it is quick drying. So if I put a heavier deposit of ink down, and if you listen, you can start to hear a bit of a hiss. So it's just telling you you've got a slightly heavier deposit. Make sure you always put the dirty side of your stencil down. Okay, I normally draw the edge of the frame. It just sort of makes the image a bit more complete. Um, what you can do The useful cheat is if you've got an existing image, mm -hmm. you can obviously trace it. So if I put a really big, thick deposit of ink on here, and you hear it, very likely that there'll be a lot of surface noise on this. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm. But again, that can add a really lovely mm -hmm. quality. Mm. When there's that much ink on there, start to use your hand pressure mm. to make interesting marks. Um, so I'm not Tracy and it doesn't bother with the stencil. So she just literally inks up, puts paper on top and then draws. Generally she's working in much more expensive paper. is that actually if you look at the drawing of that and the drawing of that there's no difference really mm -hmm. I think the quality of the drawing of that is just the same as the quality of drawing of that but when you look at those two things what looks like it's a serious set of intentions that for me looks like it's serious so the mounting of it actually says this is supposed to be like this mm -hmm. the, the, the carefreeness of this is fine but then you've got to spend 10-15 minutes now mounting that up trimming it down. So actually, if you get them this bit right first, it's going to save you a lot of time. Mm. In terms of cleaning up, it's not a bad idea to use. That's, That's all right, man. As much as possible, you can clear the excess ink away um, before you start cleaning it with water, then it's going to mean less mess. A lot of um, printmaking has become water-based in the last sort of 10, 15 years oh, yeah. because of health and safety. So, I mean, obviously, when you're using yeah. old oil-based inks and you're using white spirit, etc., that's quite lethal stuff. Um, Why is white spirit lethal? Well, le basically, white spirit is a sensitizer. Um, white spirit enters your bloodstream through your skin and it attacks your liver, your central nervous system and your kidneys. Oh. And also leaves you prone to dermatitis. 
So when you're washing your hands in white spirit, you're absorbing all of that stuff. Now what happens is that that's fine in the short term, but in the long term, your body can build up a resistance to that material. And if you get to a certain point, then as soon as you come into contact with the material, your body will kind of complain against it. So it might be you, you burst into boils and blisters. I mean, I've nice. got very, very bad dermatitis. What I'm going to do is I'll show you another kind of form of mono printing as well, which is quite effective and quite nice. But this is a bit of tape. Um, going back to that same stencil. I'm going to tape, this time dirty side up, the stencil to the glass. I'm going to also tape the whole lot of colour to the glass. It doesn't have to be a rectangle shape. You know, you could actually want to print any particular shape. If you wanted to do for a heart and you wanted to print loads of hearts off, you could have a heart shape stencil. When you're making a simple relief print in this manner, if you've got your paper here and you've got a stencil on top of that and you're passing a roller over that, then your stencil area is higher than your printing area. If you cut a hole out and the hole is underneath the paper, this brings your paper up to the same level as your stencil height. So if I now lift this up, and put my paper in there. This middle bit's the same height as this. So that means I can just take a roller and just pass a roller directly over the top. And I can draw with the roller. 